Hey there, everyone, and welcome to Link's Awakening. Before I get started, there's a quick little musical Easter egg that I always like to unlock to get me pumped for the game. And it, all you have to do to unlock it is type ZELDA in all caps, just like from the first game where that unlocked the second quest immediately. In this game, all that does is give you a, a song that you wouldn't be able to hear otherwise, and here it goes. That's pretty intense. It just keeps looping on like that, and it's a lot of fun to just sit there and listen to. But we're going to go ahead and get started on the uh, second file, since I took up the first one with that whole Zelda thing. Um, we're going to start on the second file, and one thing I like to do in any RPG or game where you can enter your own name, otherwise enter your own name, not that Zelda is necessarily an RPG, it's more of an adventure game, but semantics aside, whenever you can enter your own name, I like to use dude for my name, because it helps spice up the dialogue a little, and kind of make it anachronistically funny in cute little ways. So, uh, let's get started on our dude file, dude. Oh no. Oh god. Oh, football practice. Oh. Alright, it's about time you start talking. Do we, do we have a little moment there or something? Oh. Well, that's because it's hot in here. If you would turn on the damn AC, you must still be feeling a little woozy. Oh, yes. Okay, well, that makes a whole lot of sense because every other Link game takes place in Hyrule, except for the ones on the Game Boy systems, uh, oddly enough. Uh, every Zelda... Well, and then uh, the CDI ones, but then again, those don't really count. But just about every... Game Boy game you put see already that dude thing is kicking in well dude you finally snapped out of it <laughs> I don't really have a name I'm the wandering man I'm the walking dude the man with no name those are completely different characters well what is my name surely it's not dude what is my name I guess it's for me to know and you to find out never ha <laughs> but yes most of the, uh, most of the, uh, Zelda games take place in Hyrule, except for the Game Boy ones. This one takes place on, uh, Koholint Island, which is where we are now, and Oracle of Ages and Seasons, which were actually developed by Capcom, take place in places other than Hyrule. But the first priority is getting back our sword, and we're gonna need our shield to do that, and that's basically the only time I'm gonna use my shield ever, except against certain enemies that it's helpful against. Helpful or pretty much necessary against. Whichever... I don't know. And if you hold your shield out, you can bump enemies out of your way. You can bump them out of your way, or you can deflect shots like the Octoroks. Like so. But we're going to make our way down to the very south. We're going to head for Toronto Shores. Not to be confused with Toronto Shores, Canada's finest beachside resort. And then move this out of the way, and we are completely free to get our sword now. Nobody is going to stop me or interrupt me. Except for this guy. This is Hoot. Hoot the Owl. A very creative name, I know. But, uh, yeah, that's my sword. It's got my name on it. See? Dude. Okay. Okay. Or unless I get a valid passport, right? No? Just wake the windfish? Okay. We need to go to the mysterious forest, then. He'll wait for us there, but we're going to keep him waiting a while. We're going to get our sword first of all. But there are some very important things we need to do before we head on to the mysterious woods. These will have a bearing on future events, and it's just best to get them out of the way now so you're not worrying about them then. But I like to move the lever out to here. Not the lever. That's a, uh, well that looks like a Gordo from the Kirby games. The levers are the things that pop up out of the sand. See, they have these hats like that, or these, these little claw heads or whatever, and they come after you like... First of all, we're going to use our sword and we're going to try to save up 10 rupees. 10 is not a very high amount. And I'm going to switch my sword over to the B button because that's what I feel more comfortable with. I guess these guys, they look kind of like a mix between the, uh, the, the, what's the guy's name from Dig Dug? Uh, not the, not the Figar, not the Flame of the Puka. 
They look like a mix between the Pukas from Dig Dug and the Gordos from Kirby, so I'm not sure what their name is, but they sure as hell aren't Weavers. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to try to uh, excavate for some money real quick because that's going to get us started on the trading sequence in this game. We can trade a sequence of items which will eventually culminate in an item that helps us beat the game. So, or it's not, it doesn't help us beat the game, it's actually necessary for beating the game. So, this is something you have to do, so what better time to start than now? And we picked up a Guardian Acorn, which reduces the damage we take by half. I generally don't care for Guardian Acorns, but whatever. We're going to cut down some grass. I mean, anything to take a little less damage, I suppose, but I've only got three hearts right now, so it doesn't really matter. If something's going to kill me, it's pretty much going to kill me. Okay, we're almost up to 10 rupees already. Not bad. I'm pretty sure we'll get that at least on the way back to town, probably. Okay, maybe in the bushes here with these uh, little kids playing ball. Not going to interrupt their game. I don't see any reason to do that. All right, and we got our 10 rupees. Excellent. There are always hearts in those particular bushes. So if you need a quick pick-me-up, you can cut down those bushes and get yourself three quick hearts. But for, now, for now, we're going to jump into this well and get our first piece of heart. We're going to get four full heart containers this way. There are 16 pieces of heart in the game. And I am certainly going to find every single one of them. They are responsible for four of our 14 eventual... Our eventual 14. Whoa, no, 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 no. I didn't mean to hit the puppy. If you hit the puppy with the sword, he'll attack you. And it does hurt, as you can see by the fact that I now have a little less health. Chickens... They aren't so uh, they are so keen to attack you. Uh, not after one strike, at least. Perhaps I will show you what I mean later. But we want to come over to this patch of field right here, and we want to pretty much mow things down. It's good to get a lot of money going in the beginning, and this is a good place to farm for money since you can uh, cut just about every tile on the screen now, and you can mow just about everything. And there is even a seashell in the grass. If you collect a lot of these, something good is bound to happen. Oh, yes. Don't you know it. Okay. We'll show you exactly what happens when we have enough seashells. But uh, we're going to be collecting quite a few of those things throughout the game. So uh, there's a lot of stuff to keep track of as far as collection-wise. We're going to be doing a training game where we get all manner of trinkets that people are going to find useful. We're going to be collecting seashells heart containers we got a lot to keep up with here okay 13 rupees not too bad for now okay i'm gonna okay i don't know why i'm still continuing to mow the lawn if if i said i was okay for now but there we go i'm actually trying to get a little more than uh 10 you'll see why soon but first we're gonna come in here we're gonna play the trendy game with the pbs logo man down in the corner Yes, we want to play, and we want the Yoshi in the middle. There's no timing to it, because the Yoshi doll doesn't move at all whatsoever. All you need to do to get the Yoshi doll, which is the most important thing here, is to hold B, is to, uh, oh wait, I'm in the wrong spot, is to, is to hold B until you're right over the Yoshi, and then hold a until the conveyor is right over the treadmill and this should uh, grab it for us I think please don't tell me I went too low okay yeah there's a pretty generous uh, grab grab area on that Yoshi so uh, you can be a little off underneath or above and it'll still get it but there's our first important item in the trading sequence a Yoshi doll Yes, recently, if you mean 1993, which is when this game was released, then yes, Yoshi was pretty much all over the damn place. It kind of got annoying after a while. Okay. Okay, I'm finding hearts, but not a lot of rupees. So, uh, I do certainly want to find rupees, but I'm not going to make too much of a chore of it at the moment, at least not on camera. So I'm just going to blaze a path up this way, and we're going to take the Yoshi doll north. Because the next sequence in the, or the next item rather, sorry, in the trading sequence can be found up the way here. At what is generally known on the map as the uh, quadruplets house. There's a, there's a couple here. They've got four baby kids, although you can only see one at a time the way she's uh, holding them. And we're going to give the Yoshi doll over to the babies. 
you use your trading sequence items automatically. So you just basically agree to give them to them, and they give you something in return. Not necessarily of commensurate value to what you had. I don't know that I would say that a ribbon is as good as a Yoshi doll. Maybe you can trade the ribbon for something else, and that's exactly what we're going to go do right now. We do, of course, want to make sure we're cutting down the grass looking for rupees because there's one more person whose services we want to avail ourselves of before we leave Mabe Village here. There's Marin up there. She kind of hangs out in the town square. We'll talk to her later when we have some more pertinent items in our, in our, uh, you know, inventory. That thing. Hi, daughter. But we want to go into this little side shack here. We're at Madame Meow Meow's house, but we're going to go in the uh, garage or the side shed or whatever. And we're going to talk to this mini chain chomp right here. Wow, wow. Some new accessories would be nice, like maybe a big fat ribbon. Oh yeah, I will absolutely trade it for the dog food. <laughs> so here's your can of preservative laden crap. It's full of juicy beef. Well, then we know it didn't come from Taco Bell. hi yo! Now we're going to take this can of beef and we're going to do the last step that we can do in the trading cycle for the time being. So you can get a lot done fairly early around here. You can get a lot out of the way in a short amount of time if you know what you're doing. And me, well, I certainly know what I'm doing because I'm the man. We're going to go back down to the beach real quick. Hey, alright, Octoroks are a great place to get rupees from, so uh, you want to get make some quick money, come down here and kill some Octoroks, because they are certainly more than willing to give up their money, generally, when they have any. There we go, and levers too, you can always get money from levers, or those Puka Gordos that are hanging around right here. This is about where we want to go, we want to go to the right. Okay, there's another one. I'm trying to get my way up to 20 rupees now, in case that's not clear. I haven't said anything about that yet, so I don't know why it wouldn't be. I don't know why it would be clear at the moment. I've kind of kept you in the dark. But yes, I'm going for 20 rupees as I make my way over to this shack. This is Sail or Sale or Sali the Gator, the alligator, bopping his tail up and down, and uh, he's a hungry guy. And he's in the market for some canned food. For God's sake, give me the fucking beaveroni! I'm gonna give it to him. Because I don't want to get eaten, so I better give him something if I don't want him eating me. It's kind of like how you feed sharks when you're not in a cage. Alright. Well, I'd say it's a fair trade. The bananas are certainly healthier in any event. But the bananas are the last thing we're going to get for now. So I'm going to leave the shack, and I will be back in Koholan... Well, I'm on Koholan Island pretty much all the time. We're stuck here until we can wake up the windfish. Hello. But I'm going to hang around, and I'm going to get myself 20 shiny rupees. And then I will meet you back in Mabe Village, the place I meant to say. So uh, I'll be right back after I've collected the, uh, the amount of money I'm after. Which, again, 20 rupees, and you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, I'm back in Kahol, and I have 25 rupees rather than 20, because in my travels I happen to get a piece of power, which makes your sword hella stronger, and it not only improves your walking speed, it also improves how well you can kill enemies, and it makes the killing process a lot faster. And not only that, but it makes the uh, rupee farming process a lot faster as a result. So I just decided to hang around and get some extra money for what's up here, which is a fishing game. You can see my piece of power in the bottom left corner. You can tell you have a piece of power when your sword is flashing. And see, this is how hard you hit enemies when you have a piece of power. Watch this chicken fly. Okay, he didn't really fly or anything, but uh, there was definitely a different sound to it when I hit him with my sword. Yeah, pieces of power are awesome. I always try to pick those guys up. But enough time wasting, we're up here to play the fishing game, which is where we're gonna get our second piece of heart. How about some fishing, little buddy? Charge 10 rupees, I will fish. Okay, here's how we do it. Okay. Press left and right to move our lure around. And then we're gonna press the A button, or the B or A. I think the A button to uh, lure him in. We're going for the f big fish that's way out there at the end of the lake in the bottom left corner there. So we're gonna hold left to cast our reel extremely far out. 
Okay, we got a little one right now, but that should make it easier to get to the bottom one next time. Usually you do have to catch one runt in the process, which is why I like to get a little bit of money before I come to this, because you only get five rupees for a little guy like that. So if you come in with ten rupees, you spend your money, you catch a little one, and then uh, you're only up five rupees, so you can't fish again. So that's why I like to get a little buffer before I come here, at least 15. I was going for 20, I kind of overshot it, but oh well. Better over than under. Alright, press the button rapidly to reel him in. So we're once again going to send it way out here and we're going to let it drop to the bottom of the pond. Okay, and now we got this guy. This is where I like to hold it down and just and just ram that A button. Uh, 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 where do you think you're going? It's a lunker. Oh, he didn't have the piece of heart. Then I guess it's the one uh, right here by... Uh, I guess it's the one right here by the shore. Well, it's a good thing I got 20 rupees to keep fishing with. Okay, well, uh, then we want to hold right, actually. Okay. Runs are easy to catch. We're pretty much going to clean out this lake. Good lord. Okay, whatever. We have the money. We're going to keep going. Yes, okay. And now we can definitely get this guy. I thought it was the one way out there, but I guess it's uh, just this one out in the middle here. Been a while since I played, I guess. We're going to let the reel come in as close to land as we can without actually drawing it back. And then we're going to... Uh... There we go. That's the one whose attention I wanted to get. I thought I was going to get the... Thought I was gonna get the little guy. There we go. When you hear that sound, you know you've caught the one with the piece of heart. So we're already halfway to another heart container. That's not too bad. Nope. We are done for now. We've made quite a bit of money doing this, actually. Uh, excuse me. I got plenty of passion. I just caught a lake full of fish. Why don't you mind your own business, <laughs> jerk fisherman? But that's not the last of we've seen of him. We'll meet him again in the future. But that's going to be all for today. We've started the trading sequence, gotten used to the uh, surrounding area. Mabe Village, Toronto Shores. Gotten a little walking out of the way. Gotten a few things done that are going to come in really handy later. And now we're going to make our way onto the mysterious woods, which is where we're going to stop for today. We're going to cut this piece of grass down, and that's going to be our entrance to the mysterious woods, which we will explore tomorrow.